every 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 type. Um, you know, if there's seven billion people on this planet, that means and there's nine types. That means approximately there are about eight hundred million t- of your own type. So there's eight hundred million sixes, there's eight hundred million fours, eight hundred million ones, something like that. Um, the seven, we're nearly there. The seven uh, is another security type. Uh, they, uh, that's gluttony. So they tend to have very, very fast minds, and they want to do the next thing and the next thing and the next thing. And as opposed to whereas a six would be afraid of um, the glass being half, well, it's not actually, it's it's actually the the sixes would fear that the glass could break as opposed to the glass is half empty. (laughs) Um, The fours would be that maybe the glass is half empty. Uh, you know, is this it? The glass is half empty, you know, sort of, where's my full glass? Um, sevens will be, uh, the, they'll be quite optimistic and they'll just want another, they'll just want another beverage. They'll just want something else. And it's the, it's, um, the grass is always greener. It's not worst case scenario thinking, which is what sixes suffer from. It's best case scenario thinking. But they can go from job to job, relationship to relationship, and they get very, very itchy feet. They struggle to um, to calm their minds because there's an ego fixation of uh, uh, thinking fulfillment is somewhere else other than the now. Mm. And so their, their vice and passion is gluttony. Mm. And so the virtue, the opposite, is sobriety. Hmm. It's here. Mm-hmm. It's here right now. This is as good as it's going to get right now. And I had a seven friend who said, um, um, the grass is greener on the inside. Mm. Because all of these are projections. All the ego is doing is projecting externally outside of itself. Right. The first part of control is the challenger, which is the eight. Um, they, uh, their basic desire is self-protection, and their ego motivation is lust. So that's one of the Christian, uh, capitalist Christian sins. That's where lust comes from. And uh, the opposite of lust, innocence. Mm. And they have this uh, wall around their hearts, a lot of eights, and they're very uh, dominant and uh, very lustful and forcing, uh, called the challenger, uh, called the boss. Um, type nines bang in the middle of love and uh, 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 in the middle of uh, control. The peacemakers, um, their holy idea is love. Their basic fear is loss, fragmentation, or separation. And so the basic desire to have wholeness, peace of mind. They're also called the um, uh, the mediator, and they're very very good at being able to resolve conflicts within people because they're constantly wanting peace. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Dalai Lama is a nine. The, the Queen Elizabeth II on the throne is a nine. And um, their vice and passion is sloth. So it's self-forgetting mm. because it's always about wanting everybody else to be calm and everybody else to be okay to keep control. Mm-hmm. And thus they sometimes forget about themselves and they won't be moving forward. So they're the opposite of that, if you think what a, a sloth or a, slo- or a sloth is, is mm-hmm. action. To mm-hmm. actually take action, it's phenomenally hard for for, mm-hmm. for for nines to take action because they're constantly self-forgetting. They don't think they have any goals, or why should they have any goals? Because so their main have, their main thing is like in those two people is to they have a mission already. They were born to it. One right. was born a queen, right. and one was born ru- not a ruler, but really a, a missionary peacemaker. You know, I mean, the Dalai Lama is already incarnated, reincarnated so many times that the mission is already there. So I can see that. uh, that, that There have been previous Dalai Lamas who have not been nines. Really? Uh, uh, Oh, yeah, yeah. There was one Dalai Lama who who enjoyed uh, wine, women, and song. I think life would have been very, very different in terms of Buddhism if that was... uh, He didn't live too long. You go and look. It's all on Wikipedia. So, um, but here you have uh, ego fixations. So within the one, it's resentment. With the two, it's flattery. With three, it's vanity. With four, it's melancholy. With five, it's stinginess and retention. With six, it's cowardice and worrying. With seven, it's planning and anticipation. With eight, it's vengeance and objectification. And nine, it's indolence, daydreaming. So this now that, let's that's do the, the vir- let's do the virtue of that because really we want to be the positive. With one, you're, you're and then. 
Go ahead. Have you got it up? Are you looking at it right no, now? No, I was going to say with okay. one, the opposite would be something beautiful. Serenity. Mm-hmm. With, and the number two, the helper, humility. Number three, truthfulness, authenticity. Number four, uh, equanimity, emotional balance. Number five, non-attachment. Mm-hmm. Number six, courage. Number seven, sobriety. Number eight, innocence. And number nine, action. And I then you would have the positive let's, side. <laughs> exactly. And you would have, if every human being were, was doing that uh, on planet Earth, every human being, you'd have, you know, and every human being was literally a, a walking messiah or a, um, uh, you know, a, a Jesus, a Buddha, a, a Krishna, a Muhammad. They would be, uh, they, well, there would just be peace on Earth, wouldn't mm-hmm. there? There would be. There'd be no agenda anymore. You'd have all these incredibly highly evolved beings that were no, no longer having an ego fixation. Exactly. The suffering, the, the, our personal sufferings are, are caused by our ego, and the, the sufferings that are going on around the planet are caused by ego. And if we decide that we want to live in a more peaceful life for each of us, then... Then you, you have to make a commitment to... Uh, to being and, and creating peace within personally. Mm-hmm. It's that simple. So if you want to create a better world, start with yourself and, and start by looking at your actions, looking at your motivations and being honest with yourself. And this, since this is a self-love summit, um, I, I invite people to go and discover their types. It's sometimes quite challenging to begin with to think, I have an ego agenda. I, you know, I, I've got no problems. I, I'm okay. But every human being has an ego and every human being has an agenda. And um, even if you are really, really, you know, someone who's worked on themselves for a long time and done a lot of meditating, what is it that you're meditating on? What is it that you, you're, because meditation is bringing you into these things, serenity, humility, authenticity, equanimity, non-attachment, courage, sobriety, innocence, and action. So this is, this is a little simple test for human beings to work on themselves. Stop for a minute. Totally stop. And connect with your breath and see how often that you can do that as the, you uh, allow the, the rise and fall of your breath and just see what your mind focuses on. Find what your mind is, is, is moving towards because that'll be the mind that's awake and be interested in something either in the past or the future. Mm-hmm. So that's where the ego uh, agenda is going to arise. And if you give it enough space and just, just watch it, observe it, as if it was a cat mm-hmm. as you were meditating, and it had got up and it started to move somewhere. To, it'll be moving towards somewhere. And the more that you pay attention to what it's wanting, the more that you've got an idea of what your enneotype will be. Hmm. Interesting, okay. And then uh, exploring it further, and um, uh, I certainly, personally, as well as with many, many of my clients, have um, have found much more self-love, self-acceptance, and compassion for myself and others. Mm-hmm. Because then you're able to understand why you're suffering. Mm-hmm. And it's not necessarily just the understanding in itself is going to um, liberate you from your suffering, but it's mm-hmm. start. It's a part of the journey, and it's the start. And uh, it'll certainly, certainly help you towards developing compassion for others. Mm. And um, if you're looking at a place of self-love. Well, why is having compassion for others anything to do with Mm self-love? If you are more compassionate towards other human beings, you're going to be less envious, less angry, perhaps less controlling, perhaps less fearful. And uh, if you are giving to yourself um, the the goodness, which is what compassion um, offers us, the... uh, the peace that comes with compassion, because the, the compassion, there's no agenda with compassion. Mm-hmm. It's just understanding that there's an mm-hmm. that there's some there's a suffering here, and uh, and it's observing that, mm-hmm. and that in itself is is self love. That in itself is miraculous. 
So, Daniel, you have a free gift for the viewers. Would you like to share that? Yeah, my free gift is uh, a consultation with me for, for 20 minutes. That's and that awesome. may be about the Enneagram. It may be about uh, EFT, maybe about NLP, uh, anything that I do. But uh, I work locally and I work around the world and I work over Skype. That's perfect. Wonderful. And what would you like to leave the viewers with? You know, a heartfelt Daniel. Your liberation will always be found within. Mm. Always I within. I love that. That's beautiful. That's a new Danielism for me. <laughs> <laughs> It's all over my pages. I'll be <laughs> Daniel Hill after I write that. <laughs> Thank you so much, Daniel. This was a pleasure you're as welcome. always. Thank you. You're you're a fun one to interview, and and I so honor this time with you. Thank you. Thank you, me. Thank you. Thank you, viewers, for watching, and we'll see you all in the next segment. <laughs>